One medical regiment are on a routine patrol that soon becomes anything but. Using actors from the amputees in action company, the medics are faced with the result of an IED strike. Two seriously injured soldiers to treat and a firefight with a dangerous enemy. Both of which they have to deal with simultaneously. I think it's very difficult to control in the incident, like uh, commanders are really busy. And then as a medic, we always focus with the casualties. And then it's really tough job to do that. Um, you have to be tough and then really fit. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, OK. This is the casualty under fire test of their role one validation. Essential training for them as medics and soldiers before they deploy on the last combat tour of Afghanistan. Training also recognises how much Op Herrick has and will still change. Air support isn't on offer, so instead the medics must stabilise their casualties for 40 minutes before they are moved by road. Times are added stressor, they're going to have to hold those casualties for longer. And some of the airframes won't hold the amount of casualties they've got. The scenario we've just done, they had a, um, a casualty they're having to hold for, for up to 40 minutes whilst the, the extraction vehicle did a turnaround and came back in. And then they're going into prolonged uh, field care, or nursing care, as, uh, as they like to call it. Uh, so they, they go into more, uh, more of the looking after the casualty, not as, as well as looking after their um, clinical needs, they're then looking at the other things they need, so nutrition, hydration, and maintaining that casualty for a long period of time, because they're still a person they need to look after, as opposed to, to just a casualty. Every stage of care from the initial incident to the ambulance and the medical centre is rehearsed under a team of observers and validators from five medical regiments. This time a soldier has been shot and is now unconscious. This is obviously a very serious situation and these medics and doctors must work together quickly to treat the casualty. But in reality, injuries like this only make up about 2% of all cases these medics have to work with in Afghanistan. So they must also know how to deal with much more minor injuries. And that's another way in which one med are preparing for the relative uncertainty of Herrick 20 and all the factors that affect the end of a campaign. We're looking at um, statistics that are coming from Operation Herrick at the moment and ensuring that we uh, exercise the troops accordingly to, the, to things coming out of that. Essentially, uh, primary health care is, is a real must and a need for Operation Herrick at the moment. And you'll see a lot of trauma here, but that is just a mere small percentage of what the people and the medical professionals will see out in, in Afghanistan. I think the biggest thing that we're doing differently is just making sure that everyone's prepared for every eventuality. Um, the brigade commanders made it very specific that everyone must be flexible uh, throughout this tour. So we make sure every individual is ready to deliver primary health care, emergency medicine, environmental care, but they can also deliver good um, medical evacuation if required as well. The British footprint in Afghanistan is getting smaller by the day, but medical care will be needed right until the very end, and these medics will be there. Ali Gibson, Forces News, Hona.